It's July 24th, 2022, and we're challenging all-time temperature records here at Flight Insight Home Base in College Park, Maryland. So it's time to have a conversation about density altitude. Pressure and density altitude are two concepts in the private pilot curriculum that consistently give students trouble on both the exam and checkride. And even us experienced pilots could use a brush up on what it is and why it's important. What affects the density of the air? When the temperature is higher, air molecules spread out and are more diffuse lowering the air density. When the air pressure is lower due to weather changes, the same thing happens. Finally, when we're higher above sea level, the air density is also lower. There are fewer air molecules in a given volume of space. The aircraft doesn't perform as well. There's less air for the propeller to push to generate thrust. There's less air for the wing to push to generate lift. And there's less air for the engine to breathe to create power. Humidity also affects air density, but we'll leave that out of our calculations and focus on three factors, altitude, air pressure, and temperature. All this weakened performance means that we'll need more runway to take off and we won't climb as well as we would if the air density were higher. So pressure and then density altitude try to take these different conditions in the atmosphere and express them in a way that makes it easy to compare to other conditions. So instead of saying the aircraft's performance today will be based on temperature of 36 degrees Celsius, air pressure 30.05 inches of mercury, and 48 feet of altitude, we'll say that in standard conditions, the aircraft will behave as if it were at 2,500 feet. This is our density altitude. We're creating standard conditions, fantasy land, and saying that if we put our aircraft into this fantasy land, it would behave the same way as it would today in the real world as it would at 2,500 feet in the fantasy land. The fantasy land or standard conditions is always the same, 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, dropping two degrees Celsius for each thousand feet climbed, and 29.92 inches of mercury air pressure at sea level. How it's calculated gives us some trouble sometimes. It's a two-step process. First, we need to take the current altimeter setting, 30.05, subtract it from 29.92, and multiply by 1,000. This gives us negative 130 feet. We should apply this to our current altitude, 48 feet is the field elevation at College Park, to get negative 82 feet. This figure is our pressure altitude. The actual formula for this is a bit more complex, but this is a great rule of thumb that works for our purposes. Now, we need to get to density altitude by applying temperature. Our outside air temperature, which we can read off our PFD, is 36 degrees Celsius, or 97 Fahrenheit. We should subtract from this the standard conditions temperature. Remember that at sea level, the standard temp is 15 degrees Celsius. We're close to sea level here, so we can use that figure. The difference between the two temperatures is 21 degrees. We should multiply that by 120, and then add that to our pressure altitude to get 2,438 feet. This is our density altitude. This tells us that our aircraft will behave today the same way it would if we were to place it around 2,500 feet in our fantasy land of standard conditions. Let's try it. 2,500 feet is close to the field elevation at Meade Municipal Airport in western Kansas. We've set standard conditions here. That means 10 degrees Celsius. Remember, standard is 15 degrees at sea level, but at around 2,500 feet with a two degree drop off every thousand feet, we should be at 10 here. We'll observe a takeoff of the same aircraft at the same weight and the same configuration wind conditions to see that the performance is very similar. This is what density altitude does for us. It says that on a day like today at College Park, we can expect performance equivalent to taking off at Meade Airport in Fantasyland. Let's try it in much colder conditions at College Park. Here's a pretty standard day in Maryland from last winter, January 15th. It was 28 Fahrenheit, or negative 2 Celsius, with a pressure of 30.35 inches of mercury. Let's do the calculations. First, for pressure altitude, it's 2992 minus 3035 gives us negative 0.43. Multiply this by 1000 to get minus 430. Combine this with the field elevation of 48 to get pressure altitude of negative 382 feet. Now for density altitude. Let's take our outside air temp, negative 2, and subtract standard temp for this altitude, 15, to get negative 17. Multiply this by 120 to get negative 2040, and take negative 382 with this to get 
negative 2,422. This is our density altitude. Now, even in Fantasyland, there's no airport on Earth that's low enough to be 2,422 feet below sea level, but if we could dig a big hole to that depth, build a runway and put our airplane there in standard conditions, we'd get the same conditions as this winter day. Let's compare our takeoff instead to the one we just saw in the dead of summer at College Park. You can see right away the aircraft is accelerating more quickly in the winter takeoff on the right and reaches liftoff speed much faster than in summer, using less runway length in the process. Around 100 knots is our best rate of climb and we'll end up getting a few additional 100 feet per minute of climb in colder temps. We end up reaching 1000 feet a full 10 seconds before we do in hotter temps.